Hello everyone, I'm Janine Kakmar with PHTV Channel 4 Palos Heights and we're back with our show all about books. Typically on our show we talk about authors and the new releases coming out, but today we're going to be doing something different. We're going to be devoting our entire show to a special author event coming up on June 25th in Palos Heights. Uh, we're going to have New York Times bestselling author Lisa C. will be here in Palos Heights. She's going to be talking about her book, The Island of the Sea Women. This event is sponsored by the library, so today we are I'm happy to have with us, back with us, library director Jesse Blazek and public services librarian Catherine Cross. And we're going to talk about this new event, we're going to learn all about it, and her new book. So you guys, thanks for being here today. Thanks. Jesse, um, as library director, um, what, what can you tell us about this event? Um, well, like you said, it's, it's June 25th, 7 p.m. Um, we're, we're hosting it at the uh, Trinity Christian College Ozinga Chapel. Okay. Um, so there's plenty of parking, plenty of room, okay. um, no tickets. Much bigger venue. Yeah, it's a, it's a free event, open to the public, open to residents, not just to Palo Sites, but um, anybody in the area, anybody who wants to come. So, oh, so great. people should feel free to bring friends, family, yeah. um, whoever. We think that. Um, you know that Lisa C is going to uh, attract a, a yeah. pretty big audience. Um, so how how did how did this happen? How did this come to be? This event. So um, really, this started uh, about a year ago now. Uh, the library received um, a, a, a donation out of the blue that okay. we had no no idea was coming um, from the estate of a longtime Hills Heights resident, longtime library user um, named Francine Zanardo. Okay. Um, so she passed in 2017, and in 2018 we received a check. Um, out of nowhere, Deep and um, so we we talked for a while about you know different ways that we could could use this donation, um, different you know fun, exciting um, things that that we could we could use this money for, mm -hmm. and um, you know a couple of our trustees said, hey, the library is known for for you know great programming. Why don't we use this to do just a, a huge program, a, okay. you know the kind of the dream program that we'd want to put on, okay. and. Um, uh, so you know, they said, "Go look into it. See you know, see what what you guys come up with." And um, so we talked, and um, we we kind of brought back a couple different ideas for them. Um, two of which were were sort of author based events, okay. and we sort of said, "Okay, here's um, you know, um, and, and our, um, our our viewers probably know." that we host a, a, a Palos Reads event yeah. um, where we bring in an author every year mm -hmm. um, co-hosted with Palos Fine Arts and the mm -hmm. Green Hills and Palos Park Public Libraries. Right. Um, and, you know, we usually bring in uh, an author that's fairly well known. Mm -hmm. um, but so so we brought a, this, a similar idea to the board, but with kind of a bigger right. author. Right, yeah. and, then, um, and then we kind of brought, okay, this is kind of our dream author if we, you know, if we were really going to, to go as big as we could go, um, Lisa C is is the type of person we would want to bring in. And um, said, you know, would you guys like kind of the medium option or the large option? Um, and they said, let's go for the large option. Right. So somebody, somebody really special. That's something that doesn't happen. Right. I mean, I, I think a lot of times I see like New York Times bestselling authors that either be down in the city or they'll be on the north side. Right. We have somebody very special coming to the south side. So coming to to our area down here, so it gives us other people who don't get a chance to get downtown or up north side to see somebody. Right. Pretty cool. No, this this is <coughs> Lisa C is the kind of author, like you said, a New York Times multiple time New York Times bestselling author. Um, for for big readers, I think she's a household name. Mm -hmm. You know, she's somebody who who um, has a, a wide reading audience. You know, yeah. she's she she. We were talking just before the show. Uh, you know, she kind of spans genres. She she um, writes novels that are about people, but they're also um, you know couched in history. There there's yeah. an element of sort of historical fiction almost to to, oh, to what she writes. Right. Um, n not not to pigeonhole her in that camp though, because her stories are are you know so much um, vaster than that. Right, I um, know. Yeah, we were talking about how, you know, I've read several of hers. I know Catherine's read mm -hmm. several of her books, and you're actually going to be doing a discussion on this book uh, coming up on June 18th, mm -hmm. which is open to the public. You guys can come to the, go to the library, and um, there we have books available, and Catherine will lead a discussion on that. But she's written um, several books. Some of the books you might be familiar with um, China Dow's uh, tea, The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane, Snowflower and the Sea, uh, Snowflower and the, what is that? Secret Fan. Secret <laughs> Fan, thank you. And which was made into a movie. Um, and a lot of them have, you know, female protagonists or friendships, but 
also, like Jesse, you just said, they are, it's, it is couched in um, by the forces that shape these friendships. Mm -hmm. So that's where you learn a lot about where the setting is, and that, and that's what happens in this book. Um, yeah, and the setting is such a big part of this book um, because it's set in uh, the Korean island of uh, Jeju, mm -hmm. and that's and it follows these women there that are the um, the sea divers. They call them the Hanyo. Han Hanyo. Hanyo. Yeah. And um, and it's just you really get immersed into that world when you read the book, which is um, and as these women because it's a kind of a she creates. The the history the history of the the island is that these women have been like the the leaders of the island they've been the the breadwinners of yeah. the families so this, so this particular island in Korea is, has kind of a matriarchal force right which yeah. is very unusual mm -hmm. these women came out they did the, they dived they dove for you know, sea urchins mm -hmm. or or what do you call it seaweed mm -hmm. you know for food. And while they were doing that, their husbands were attending to the, the household, mm -hmm. uh, which is something unusual. And then they were they earned money from it. They were the mm -hmm. breadwinners. Right. So that's a so that's a bit of a microcosm, something different. Mm -hmm. um, but these Henyo are real people. I mean, are real. I mean, they are still today. Um, they have women divers. Um, yeah, I was even just like I just watched a video about the Henyo just. Um, just, just a couple days ago about how, and they're still diving, they're still, they have more modern equipment now, but because back but in before, this, before they were just diving like with just, you know, cotton clothes, they didn't have any equipment for like, um, for like masks, they have very basic masks, very, nothing to, to, insul to insulate them from the cold water. Right, the temperatures like that. that get as cold as 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, they, and they could dive as far as 60 feet mm -hmm. without, any modern equipment, right, yeah. As, and and but today now the the this says the average age of the uh, henyo is over fifty, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because it's kind of like they're saying it's a bit of a dying art uh, because it's the it's just not the younger women aren't going into it any, as much anymore as before it was passed down mother to daughter as you can, as you read in the book, but as, now as it's gotten more modern, it's just less of that. So it's they say that it's something that may not be in the future, it might not continue. Right, because uh, many effects, you know, the warm mm -hmm. climate and that kind of thing, right. uh, global warming and that kind of thing. Um, so you'll be discussing the book. Um, mm -hmm. What can you tell us, without giving any spoiler alerts, what, what can you give the folks out watching just a little bit of what the book is about so they could, um, you know, want to come and listen to more? Like you said, it's it follow. There's very strong friendships are a big part of it, just like a lot of her other books. Um, but it follows these two um, two women from girlhood who are um, growing up on the island, who are following in the footsteps of their elders as Hanyo, and um, the and it starts in 1938 is when it like while they're under Japanese colonialism on the island. So there's a lot of struggles that they go through just under. Because um, Korea had, rule. yeah, un, under foreign rule, so they struggle with that, and then it just keeps going into these other parts of <laughs> that get almost worse and worse. Because then you get World <laughs> War II, and there are so many struggles that they deal with with just um, the war coming to Jeju, and um, and then beyond that, the Korean War, which. I didn't think things could get worse from there, but things in the right. Korean War, it, it, it was, things got worse. And then even beyond that, it, it stretches beyond that. And as these women, they go through their lives of, you know, getting, of their own personal lives of growing, getting married, having children, and the, the friendship between the main characters, Young, young Suk and um, Mija, as they're dealing with just all the these crazy things going on in their lives and then their personal lives and their friendship being tested along the right. way. Right, so they, so they have this friendship and it's being tested by forces that they can't control. Right. You know, and that we, they didn't, you know, no one knew what was going to be happening. Mm -hmm. And that was the other thing. Um, it's, th I'm always, feel like I think we talked about this, I'm always learning something from a Lisa C book. Mm -hmm. and, and here I learned so much about the, the Korean history of the country. Um, that I had not not a clue on, and so I find that fascinating. I'm a big history fan, but but I also um, know that the, because of that, this book can appeal to a lot of other other people. And I was going to ask you, Jesse, for this for this event, for this author event that's coming up on the 25th. You know, who should go see her? I think you know there there are all kinds of, of groups that Lisa C appeals to as a writer. Um, so you know, people like you said, I think. Um, Korean War veterans, um, people who are interested in, in Korean history or Korean culture, um, you know, would be really interested mm -hmm. um, 
in this book. I think even people who know a lot about Korean culture, you know, this is this is a little bit of a, a, a sort of a twist on um, on that. And yeah. you know, I, I think anybody would learn at least a little bit of something, mm -hmm. you know, just, yeah. just from reading this book. In addition to being you know entertained and yeah. um, interested, um, I always think it's a lot of fun. Um, to have a book club, you know, book uh, a book discussion group, read the book and then go see the author. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's another uh, another group that this could really uh, um, be a, a special occasion for. Yeah. You know, if, if if you've read this book, it's you know this is kind of the her her latest book. It's relatively um, new. If your book club has read it recently, then you should definitely come and see her talk and and have a chance to ask her you know ask her some questions. Yes, that that's the thing that I I find it also is, is that you know. If you, you feel like you know an author, or you know it's because of their stories, but when you see them talk, you you f the the process of writing is the thing that right. I find very fascinating. Right. Where do these ideas come from? In fact, um, I know on the library's newsletter that's going out probably today, um, she answers five questions mm -hmm. from the public, from us, you know. And one of the questions, because she is known for her research mm. that she puts into every book, right. and one of the questions we asked her was, you know, how do you know when you're done researching? And her answer, she goes, I don't know. Mm -hmm. and, but she did tell in her answer, she was saying how research is her favorite part of writing a book um, because you never know where it will take you. And she had started doing research on something about Korea and found this, these henyo, this, you know, this, the idea of these women sea divers or the henyo, and it fascinated her. And she kept digging and digging and digging and, you know, kept, you know, and as she was digging and learning more about them, you know the story the seed of a story began to grow um, and and that's what she was saying you never know she does she never knows where her stories will come from mm -hmm. but she does know when she researches that's where it's like digging in fertile soil you know you're just right. you know finding the seed mm -hmm. or something and I think that's you know that's one of the other really interesting um, aspects of this program uh, you know having having met a, a you know a handful of fairly high profile authors mm -hmm. fairly well known authors uh, just about every single one of them are Kind of these these um, huge personalities. They're they're incredibly interesting, dynamic um, people. I, I think getting to hear them talk, just talk about how they think about the world, how they approach things, um, is is really interesting. Um, in addition to, you know, h hearing an author talk about how they write their book. If you're if mm -hmm. you're an aspiring author, that can be really helpful. Um, yeah. But it's also you know really interesting to hear about the process. Um, but even just as a reader too, you know, where do these stories come from? Where do authors? What, what is the process that authors go through to, to get from you know what seems like maybe a, an interesting idea to tell a story about to a, a novel length book? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, you think about it you, when you open up a book. Okay, you know, you you take your favorite yeah, any book as a reader. You know, you uh, of fiction, of course. You you know, you're reading. You want to get in. You want to get in the story. You want it. But when you stop to think that, you know, every word here right. was very, very thoughtfully right. mm -hmm. put on paper, and then probably scribbled out ten times, and then rewritten again and again and again until it drizzled down to the, the final thing. We don't know what goes on beyond the final product until you start to hear either you read about her or the author tells right. you some of the things. Mm -hmm. You know, which character she had to cut out or it just didn't work or she really wanted this part or this part spark you know, sparked this and that. Well and, and that's, you know, thinking about things from from, like you said, the, the creative the, process. The, the the big picture of the story, mm -hmm. you know, this character doesn't fit, this piece of the story doesn't fit doesn't flow with the, the novel down to like you said you know researching this sentence for this page you know that that just I want to I want to you know enhance this feeling mm -hmm. or that you know this statement or this character tr you know trait um, you know I'm having a writer in the family now and and um, getting to see a little bit of this process um, behind the scenes how, how it's um, evolving has been, you know, really interesting to me, and and again gives me a, so, so much more appreciation for the, like you said, the um, the amount and detail of research that goes into a book like this, right. and it's it just it's mind-boggling. And describing a world that is unknown to say, like right. the undersea world right. of Jeju Island, <laughs> Korea. Right. I have no idea what yeah. that looks like, but to have a writer create that. Right. Through words and imagery, mm -hmm. and to, so that when you read it, you're you're plunked right in the, the ocean right. with them. You in, know, in within 50 pages or 100 pages, you're, this world has been created for you mm -hmm. out of nothing. Yeah. You know, you don't that's, have to. Yeah, that's where the great, you know, yeah. J.K. Rowling can, can you know 
creating a whole new world of you know the Harry Potter and all that stuff, which is such part of our culture right, right now. Right. It's, it's kind of crazy when you think about the impact that it can have. But it's an amazing talent. And, oh, uh, and yeah. like I said, I think that's one of the things that, you know, when you meet these authors, you find, it, in a way, it's not surprising to find that there's, there's a, a, a huge personality behind this ability to create a world like that. And, or even some um, might surprisingly a quiet personality. Right. Yeah, you know, right. somebody who, um, you, that you might think who, who you would have a, an image of someone who could write something like this, but they're surprisingly just very quiet and, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, you know, so whatever. Um, but Korea, so the, the setting is in Korea. Um, now I know, um, Catherine, you want to talk about the, the program that's coming up at the library prior to this? Right, yeah. On um, June, Wednesday, June 12th, we're having a program on Korea, Korea Past and Present. It's actually um, one of my good friends is coming in. She's from Korea originally, and she's um, she knows a lot about Korea. She's going to talk about the history um, and the impact that it has today on Korea today because Korea is still changing. It still is impacted by a lot of these things that were you read about in here, you know, from Japanese colonialism and, you know, to the Korean War, it still impacts everything today. So she's going to talk about all of that, like, and some of their customs some and their traditions. Customs, traditions, too, since she is from there, she can talk about some of her family histories um, and just some of the things that most of us don't actually, we don't know that much mm -hmm. about Korea. So she's it's so in the news right now. Mm -hmm. Right, you know? right. Yeah. It is I think that's one of the interesting things, too, to, to, to have, uh, get filled in a little bit more on kind of the historical backstory of how things got to be the way they are. Like mm -hmm. you said, I mean, we hear so much about, well, North Korea mostly, but, um, and the tension between North and South, mm -hmm. the, you know, what's going on with the de demil um, demilitarized zone, yeah, okay. and, yeah. you know, that's potentially at a changing point, possibly soon, right. um, which would be, you know, historically huge. Um, but again, there's there's so much backstory here, and yeah. and and um, the effects of this on the the everyday life mm -hmm. of yeah. of Koreans for generations has yeah. been just. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was just saying when you're listening to you speak now, it's like what we hear or what the general public hears. You know, it's just white or black, you know. Right. No, learning the history of some place, it really brings to color all the other, the other you know, it's a, these, these issues and these the situations are not white and black. They are a combination of many decisions and over many years. So there's many layers that, you know, when you start to learn about it, you have a greater understanding about what go, goes on. And, um, and so that little thing on the map with the line drawn between north and south, you have a greater understanding of how that thing that happens, right. you know, right. and the people and the effect of the lives of the people. I mean, that's what brings it real to, to real life because ultimately, you know, we're all human. We all have very basic similar needs. We think that we're, someone across the world can be somebody very different mm -hmm. when in, in fact they have families and they love their families like we love our families and all that kind of thing. And well, that's one of the other things that is so intriguing to me about this book and, and I think about a lot of her other books, um, reading the synopses of, of, um, mm -hmm. of them. Um, you know, you mentioned the matriarchal society mm -hmm. and just, you know, the ability to to tell a story um, about this this culture that is uh, in in one way so incredibly different from ours, you know, we we it, it's almost uh, uh, like I have to bend my my brain to, yeah. to get it to wrap around this idea of you know um, female headed households and mm -hmm. men who stay home with the kids, and you know it's it's more common these days than it has been, but. No, you but know. not back then. I mean, right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The 1930s? Th th this is yeah. a different world, yeah. Um, yeah. essentially. But then, you, then as you get into the characters, these are characters that are real and familiar. You know, they're not that different, like you said, from from people anywhere else in the world. People that we, you know, we know. They have the same friendships and, and emotions and um, challenges, and they approach them in, in similar ways. Um, so it's it's really interesting to me to to read about, um, like you said, people who are 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 not foreign um, in the sense of being completely and utterly mm -hmm. different from us and right. you know like alien um, beings yeah oh, um, absolutely these yeah. are these are human beings right, living human lives like us but in a completely <laughs> different um, context than mm -hmm. than we live and to me that's that's that has um, really you know human appeal yeah. um, mm -hmm. that I think reaches across genres you know um, appeals to, to all kinds of people. Right, so whether, oh, I don't read fiction, I only read nonfiction, right. or I don't read nonfiction, I only read, you know, that's, you know, those, those kind of 
uh, statements or points of view kind of get right. washed aside when you when you read just a good story and you can you connect to people mm -hmm. through good stories yeah. you connect to other people's lives through a good story um, and you learn some things along the way the the Korea um, what's it called past, and, past present. and present Korea past and present program at the library on June 12th, June you said? 12. You, that's a great way for uh, th for those of us who want to go to see Lisa C's talk to learn about a major character in this book, mm -hmm. which is the country itself. The location of the book is a major character. Um, and then then getting ready to see her on the 27th, Lisa C, uh, at Ozinga Chapel. Um, the, the 25th. 25th. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just testing you guys, making sure you know. It's June 25th. Yes, I have that tattooed on my brain. <laughs> yeah, look at the slides. We'll have the slides posted. So June 25th, Ozinga Chapel. Um, plenty of parking. It's a free event. And she will be signing. We will be having books right. will be sold there, I understand. Yeah, so um, we're partnering with, with Trinity Christian College's uh, bookstore. Mm -hmm. They'll be on hand to sell books. And Lisa um, will be doing, um, uh, you know, signing uh, in, in addition. So. Um, seven o'clock. She's gonna she's gonna speak. Um, that'll last about an hour or so, and then um, afterwards she'll she'll hang around to do uh, book signing. So Wonderful. if you're a Lisa C fan, yeah. you need to be here. Um, and, and like Janine said um, before, she uh, Lisa, you know, she's a pretty big name. She doesn't oh, yeah. she doesn't just go around you know every public library in the Chicagoland area. Yeah. Um, you know she's she's doing. She's from pretty, Los Angeles. She's coming from right. Los Angeles to right. come up here. And yeah. she's do, she does when she does come to the area, she goes to pretty big venues, pretty high profile places is usually downtown um, but uh, so she's coming here um, right in our own backyard yeah. which is amazing and um, that's part of the reason you know why are we ha having it at Trinity why isn't she coming to the library well the library has a max capacity of 100 people yeah. um, in our in our biggest meeting room and we expect that there are gonna be far more than 100 people here yeah, so the yeah. chapel holds plenty plenty of people yeah we'll have more than enough room for anybody who who wants to come and um, parking plenty, plenty of parking, parking. Yes. it should be free parking yeah it'll be a, a really nice uh, really yeah. nice evening for, for anybody who's a Lisa C fan or like I said anybody who's interested in yeah. um, in writing or just interested in in you know Korea or a good cultural event yeah. in the mm -hmm. summertime it's hard to find sometimes everybody's out doing things yeah. but here we're gonna have it you know right here in our little city Catherine so what will you tell your your book group the book book discussion group about um, about the book um, I'll just I'm gonna talk to them about you know just how how you know the, all the different themes in it? How great it is to to read about these these different people and to to get involved to to learn about this and that they have this opportunity now too. So when I I pitched it to my book my book group last month uh -huh. about you know that this was happening and that she's coming and everyone's really excited um, just to because to learn to hear from the author herself is going to be give us a whole other dimension to yeah. our and to our book and so. Um, and they'll even get a chance to ask her questions. Get a to yeah. Ask her questions, right. which is something we're always so just yeah. asking each other. You know, talking <laughs> to each other. Why did you yeah. do this here? Yeah. Right. Well, and it was so cool that we we sent her the the you know the Q and A questions, yeah. and she responded back, and we were like, "Whoa, this is amazing! This mm, is yeah. awesome!" And then as I you know learned a little bit more about her as a writer, she does she does these you know Skype in with book clubs. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, she's she's somebody who seems like she she really likes to connect with her readers. Yeah, and so she's I very think, active, interactive with them. Yeah, I think we're gonna have a great um, great audience for her who who. Are and ask some really you know great questions and we'll get to pick her brain you know it's gonna be really you know really interesting to, to hear well this is yeah. exciting I'm so excited and you know I understand this is gonna be um, hopefully at the beginning of a series of, of authors coming to the to the, the city yeah hopefully yeah. Um, um, we can partner with other people in the community yeah, um, that's uh, an exciting. Like idea. I said, it was kind of a it was a, a one off donation that that allowed us to, a lot, to is allowing something. us to host this event yeah. this year. We're hoping that um, that this event will will you know spark some interest from like you said other community groups who might uh, might be interested in partnering with, with us in the future and and make this you know an, an annual event where we bring in you know a, a high profile author and um, and it's such a great way to um, to to bring something new to the community. You know, I know a lot of people think of the library, books, 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 but and that's that's what they do, and that's what happens there. But there's so much more a way that there are mo many other ways the library contributes to the uh, enrichment of a community, and and this type of event is one of them. And bringing somebody new 
that um, they haven't had a chance to see or, um, or they have and they'd like to see again. I think it's just a great way and I hope that continues. Yeah, we, yeah. we've talked about it on, on your yeah. show before that um, you know, people don't, don't really know everything that the library does. And yes, like you said, we do books and we do books very well, but we do so many other things. And one of the things that, that the library, our library does um, really well in particular, I think is our, is our programming. Mm -hmm. And um, this, is, this is just kind of an example of us being able to do what we do really well in a, in a bigger format. Yeah. I think it's just a great way to connect to people in new ways, mm -hmm. um, in different ways. Mm -hmm. So we have the Korea past and present, correct me, check me on my dates. Mm -hmm. June 12th. June 12th. <laughs> and just look at the sign, the, the slide, okay. <laughs> and then of course, June 25th, June 25th. Lisa, Lisa C. at Ozinga Chapel. Um, so did I miss anything? Are we good? I think we got anything else? Yeah. Thank you all, both of you for, so much for coming in today. Thank you all for, uh, for joining us. Um, please come see us. Uh, well, I'll be there on June 25th for the Lisa C. Lisa C. event. And I hope to see you there as well. Thanks for joining us this time. We'll see you next time.